2019 Everest slot holders. There's been a bit of attrition during the course of the week. Let's have a look at our first page there. Jules and Aquas, as we know, has Pirata. Boniface Ho and Carmel Size, of course, have Classic Legend, who is running today. Chris Waller Racing, that is the change that we have seen this week. Enticing Star is now out of the 2019 Everest, which means Chris needs to make a decision on who his runner will be come a fortnight's time. Coolmore, of course, has 10 sovereigns. Yeah, of course, uh, Enticing Star retiring to start. Godolphin TBA, Melbourne Racing Club, we know, will have the winner of the Scalacci. Inglis in her time and James Harron. Again, there's a, a little bit of this TBA action happening just a couple of weeks out. Max Whitby, Neil Werrett have Sunlight. Tab has Santa and Elaine. The star has Arcadia Queen. New Long Investments have stuck with the reigning champion that is Red Zell. But we are down to the business end of the Everest, so we could see, we will see, some movement in the coming week. We absolutely will. Now, one of the big chances in the 2019 Everest is the Anthony Friedman trained Santa Anna Lane. He's owned by the William Street Syndicate. And joining us from Melbourne is the head of the syndicate, Michael Ramsden. Michael, thanks for coming on the show. Uh, really appreciate you being here. Santa Anna Lane, a, a second favourite on the line of betting for the Everest. Uh, yes, looking forward to it. I think he's uh, set to run today and hopefully he'll come back well and run into the Everest in top form. How good is it to have him back in this race? It is the world's richest race on turf for a second year running. Santa is in that field. Yeah, we were a bit disappointed last year because of the rain on the day and it just made it a little heavy for him. So hopefully this year we'll get a, a fair track and um, we can see what he's worth. It's a great syndicate. Wonderful history and, and that's what this sport evokes, horse racing. Tell us a bit more about the, the William Street Syndicate. Uh, the William Street Syndicate's probably one of the older syndicates in Australia. It was set up in 1979 as uh, part of a uh, gentleman's club and uh, my father was one of the ones who originally set it up. The first horse was a horse called William Street, which was no good, but the second horse was called Gurners Lane and uh, okay. since then it's been pretty good. <laughs> pretty good is an understatement. How did uh, your story with Santa, Santa Anna Lane, come about? How did this seven-year-old girling come into your world? Look, we usually buy one or two horses a year. Uh, we buy through Justin Bain, who's a bloodstock agent and a good friend. He went to the Victorian sales and uh, he found a Lope de Vega colt and we thought he suited perfectly, so we, we ended up with him. He had a few sort of machinations, ended up originally with um, Lee Friedman, then went over to Anthony, but uh, he's been a late mature and uh, we're seeing the best of him now. What about him today, mate? Look, I think he'll run well. He'll be uh, run a Ford race. He's, uh, he'll be better in two weeks' time, but I think he can be good enough to win today. We've got some vision here that we're going to take a quick look at, and that is this run in the Goodwood last year. So I'll just throw to that. We'll have a look at that, and then I'll ask you... If again, Viridine, Santa Anna Lane, then Handsome Thief, Lope de Capio, and Exalted Adam was last up to the turn in the Daly Goodwood. And on the inside, Thronum joined by Flamburge and Deeper Vega Magic, right behind them, Miss Rock with Super Cash, Ferrando back on the inside, uh, then over Cher, and right to the outside goes Secret Agenda with Nipperkin, Flamburge led, Vega Magic after it, Super Cash squeezing between them, then over Cher, I'll have a bit running on with Steel Frost, Vega Magic, Flamburge. Miss Rock was still there. Super Cash trying to squeeze through. Flamberge led. Here's Santa Anna Lane. Santa Anna Lane through on the inside. Santa Anna Lane wins the Dali Goodwin. Beats Miss Rock second for the second consecutive year. I'll have a bit of... And it was after that, the next run, the Stradbroke, that Inglis called and said that we want Santa in the Everest. But you look at run like that and you see what this gelding is capable of. Yes, it was a, a fantastic ride and he has got great closing sectionals. It was a fantastic race. Uh, funny enough, he was unlucky to win the Goodwood the year before, so he might have been a bit unlucky in the Everest last year, so maybe we'll have a, a bit of form running into the Everest. Yeah, and you might just have luck run your way. Now, you mentioned William Street, the first horse, no good, but the second one wasn't too bad, a horse called Gurners Lane, and uh, I remember it very well. 1982, I ran a book at school illegally, and the highest <laughs> price was 20 to 1, and <laughs> so we won well. But uh, <laughs> Gurners Lane, it, how do you reflect on that? I know it was your father's horse, but it was just an amazing race horse. I'm going to have a look at that uh, finish of the Melbourne Cup in just a tick, but it was one of the great finishes of the great race. 
Yeah, he, he came from last this is the uh, Melbourne Cup. Well, this is the Caulfield Cup. Yeah, yeah. That was a wet day, and I remember uh, Jeff Murphy was saying uh, he didn't handle the wet, so he won by about seven lengths. So, <laughs> fortunately, I put ten dollars on him, so I was quite happy. Uh, and what about what about the Melbourne Cup? What about what Melbourne about that Cup, run? Well, it was an amazing run because he came from second last, and he'd missed the start. And a lot of people sort of said it was. Kingston Town's race to lose, but it was really an amazing run from him, and he wasn't missed in the weights either. So it was a terrific win. Funny enough, I was on the uh, winning line because I wasn't a member yet at uh, Flemington, because I could see him clearly win. But all the syndicate members were back in the members, and they all thought Kingston Town won. Oh yeah, and have a look at it now. We'll, we'll put we'll put the sound on this because Kingston Town looked like it was going to win for all money. Have a listen. The Kingston is coming at them, and now Kingston Town's put his head in front. La Bijou is coming from a long way back with my Sarave on Astro Lynn. Bianco Lady was checked, and so was Silver Bounty. Kingston Town's in front. Port Carling's getting through with noble comment, and here's Gurners Lane driving through on the inside. The Kingston's in front, but Gurners Lane is going to him. Gurners Lane after Kingston Town. Gurners Lane goes home too well and beats Kingston Town. I mean, that's very similar to that run we just from, saw from Santa <laughs> as well. <laughs> it's not dissimilar, is it? Uh, both coming from last with good uh, late sectionals. Yeah, it was a, it was a great finish. And, and obviously the, the lane, the street, the avenues, always uh, this tie-in to uh, uh, William Street. Yes, we sort of ran out of streets after a few horses and a few lanes, so we had to sort of revert to the breeding. So uh, Santa Ana is a... Uh, a ship from the Armada, a Spanish Armada, and um, Lope de Vega was a Spanish poet who fought in the Armada and he was out of the damn first fleet, so it all tied in quite nicely to get Santa Ana Lane. Oh, very nice. Now, of course, the Ramsden family has such a long history with racing in this <coughs> country, particularly in Victoria, so fess up, tell us the truth. What are you making of this Everest concept? Look, I, I, look, I like the Everest concept. I think... It's good to get more money back into racing. Look, I race a lot of horses in Melbourne and Sydney and I'm always um, happy to go to Sydney to the races. I'm probably less excited about the uh, Golden Seagull, which is um, competing <laughs> against us on Derby Day, but uh, I think they could have been a week earlier or a couple of weeks later. But uh, the Everest you know, gets younger people to the races and I think it's uh, been working well. And um, what about uh, the, the rest of the syndicate? They're all obviously pretty excited. Uh, will they all make their way up to uh, the Everest uh, in a couple of weeks' time, October 19? Yeah, we, we've, we've got sort of, um, you know, all of the syndicate members and um, partners and friends and family, so I think we're up to 130 or 140, which is easy to organise. What, yeah, so easy. What did you take from that Everest experience last year? Because as we were just discussing a little bit earlier, the monopoly is starting to change now. Two weeks out, we get that little bit of movement. What can you take from the experience of the year before? Oh, look, funny enough, you had a horse running um, in the first Everest called Chautauqua and he, uh, he had the same sort of problem Santa Ana Lane did. The track was a little biased and uh, Redzel had a fairly easy run in front, but... I think if we can get a sort of fair track, I think Red's all going to have a great chance again, but I think uh, it might make it easier for the horses to run on. Good on you, Michael. Thanks for joining us. And uh, we wish Santa Anna Lane, you and the William Street Connections all the very best for the Everest and really appreciate you coming on and getting a little nostalgic today. That uh, win by Gurners Lane, I just love winding the clock back. <laughs> yeah, thanks very much. It was a very nice win, I thought. Yeah.